That's it. We won. Yeah, that's right. Sure, you won't be destroying the world today. Not on Ike's watch. Oh my god, that battle was intense. Oh, even Ike is drained. I hope he doesn't die. That would be so crappy. Oh, what is this? Who is this? Oh, is this Yune? Well, hello. Maybe I... Who is this? What of you? Are you leaving? I am. But I believe it's for the best. This world does not need gods. We have always failed you. We made you weak. That's why we must... Oh, is she restored to her original self, maybe? You don't have to leave. Is that Ashunera? It's true. We don't have much use for gods. But, well... You show us what we should aspire to. Right, who doesn't want the power to nuke the world? Inspiration. I agree, I... You give us a reason to grow. To become more than we are. And if we don't have that, you may. Oh, it is Yune, okay. We're nothing more than statues. Can you forgive me for the pain I've caused? I don't know. But you have already forgiven us. How could we not? <laughs> we are all family. We will try to understand one another, even when we disagree. You're right. I will try one more time. Oh, that's nice. Oh, where'd she go? Was she even here at all? Gods are so confusing. Then what happened to Micaiah and what happened to everybody else? <laughs> I don't think that Ike sold this map. Oh, there she goes. She turned back into the bird. I guess to watch us from afar, right? Oh, my God. That was an intense final battle. That was an amazing final battle, actually. I really liked that. And I imagine now we get to see the aftermath of everything we did. Come on. Oh yes, here we go. About time too. That guy's just like, well, that was really weird. <laughs> Are they just gonna keep fighting? <laughs> Could you imagine? After all this, they just pick up where they left off. Oh, that was one hell of a map. Oh no, guys, come on, come on. Are they aware? I think they're aware that they were petrified, right? Oh good, yes, throw down your weapons. No more fighting. <laughs> Did you see what happened? I think we've learned our lesson. I hope. I hope we've learned our lesson. That's right, return to life, my brethren. We thrive once more. These are some really beautiful pictures. Honestly. I just love the hand drawn aesthetic. It's really nice. Who is that? They look like they might be important. Who is that? And we get a chance to save. My God. <laughs> My God. 
Let's just save there. Let's get our ending, folks. 48 hours. Wow, this was even shorter than Path of Radiance. Go figure. Go figure. I guess being able to turn off the animations helped a lot. But still, there were like 20 more chapters in this game. Oh my gosh. Well, I guess this is over. We better be on our way. Are you going back to day in? Yes, everyone's waiting for us. We'll have to start rebuilding all over again. Hopefully this will be the last time. No, don't say hopefully. Make it the last time. If anyone can do it, you two can. I don't doubt it, but thanks for the vote of confidence. Thank you, Ike. I won't ever forget you. And now we're going to run down through everyone. Oh, look at that. Micaiah, the Priestess of Dawn, crowned 15th Queen of Day Inn at Prior King Peleus' entreaty. So she became the new ruler of Day Inn. Probably better than Peleus, honestly. I love that kid. I do. He really grew on me as the game went on, but it's nice to see that he has the uh, presence of mind to realize he's not all that. He's not really all that. Becoming Queen Micaiah's husband and her pillar of strength, Soth worked tirelessly to assist the poor. Well, that's nice. The Blade of Justice. <laughs> it should just say the Black Knight, Edward. Edward lived as a common townsman despite the Queen's wishes. I don't know, dude. He seems like he could have headed up the Royal Guard or something. Like, this kid is no joke. This kid is no joke. Maybe he fell off a little bit at the end, but I do not care. I do not care. But that's Big Eddie. Hey, that's Big Eddie. Freedom's arrow, Leonardo. Leonardo toiled at rebuilding the army with his proven skills and good looks. Uh, debatable. He was beset by women across Tellius until he told them about his stats. So apparently there are actually paired endings in this game, and I, I don't think I'm going to be getting too many of those. I didn't realize that that was even a thing. I just assumed that the support system being gutted like it was just meant that all the endings were kind of fixed, you know? Uh, what, what's Nolan? Nolan wandered across the kingdom, saving those in adversity. Stories of his altruism eventually became legends. Hey, that's my man, Nolan. So he didn't ever go back to being a, a merchant. Laura returned to her home's church and became a mother to many orphans, all of whom loved her gentleness. Yeah, I, I, apparently I had the, the Boyd missed one. Whoops. I guess that would be a really obvious one, right? But I, I just didn't even realize that was a thing. So I, I apologize if you're like a big Mo Boyd missed fan. Nothing we can do. Anyway, Eliana. Return to travel with the merchant caravan as she had before. Somewhere right now she is hungry. Even in her ending. Even in her ending. God damn it, game. God damn it, game. Aaron served for many years as lookout in his hometown. Everyone relied on him for his honest, if clumsy, work. That's nice. I still kind of wish I would have used Aaron just like ever so slightly. I wish I would have had any Sentinel, really. Even Nephany would have been good. Just if only for the variety. You know? But I don't know. I feel like Leona's better than Aaron. Tyronio worked tirelessly for his country as linchpin of Dayan's military and a pillar of statesmanship, the steadfast rider. Zahark, the blade of unity. Zahark traveled Tellius as a mercenary, resolving Bjork Lagoo's disputes. Some say he eventually settled in Galia. That sounds about right. I'm pretty sure his, his ex-girlfriend or ex-wife or whatever it was was heavily implied to be a beast, Lagoo's right. Jill, the goddess of wyverns. Queen Micaiah ceded Talrega to Jill. Bearing her father's ideals, she made her land and people prosper. Har, the Black Tempest. That's a badass sounding name. More like the Black Death. Good God, this man went on a warpath. I hope they give, like, win losses. Because I want to see who won. I want to see who won. Could be Har, could be Jill, could be a lot of people. The Black Tempest Har. The one parallel in strength is a Draco Knight. Har never fought again. Rather, he carried cargo in Talrega. I'll bet Har and Jill had a paired ending too, right? Huh. Almost kind of wish I would have got that. Seems like the game was pushing that pretty hard, so why not, right? No! Go back! Oh, I missed Fiona's. Oh, well, I'll get to see it, and you guys got to see it too, so that's whatever. I'm sorry. But that's... I don't believe you. Because, see, my dear, you have the mark. Wait, don't you have the mark? No, mother. Lady Almelda, is that the reason you thought me to be your son? I... And that's the reason why Azuka chose me out of all the children at that orphanage. Stop. This is impossible. You are my son. I am your mother, and I say so. Lady Almelda, your only memories of your son were of him as a baby. You yourself said so. In other words, he already had a mark, even as a child. 
Yes, that's so. What of it? This mark, my mark, here is called the Spirit's Protection. When I was 13, I chose to make a pact with the Spirits. So this is just a mark. And I, somebody had said that, more or less, this was actually a Spirit mark. But I, don't, I didn't necessarily see it at first because you almost expect it to not really be a Spirit mark. It's, it's kind of almost a subversion in a way that things are actually as they appear for once, you know what I mean? You'd almost expect it to be that Peleus assumes it's a Spirit mark, but in actuality, it's a branded mark. But here's basically confirming that he is not Elmilda's son. Even more than Azuka himself already did. What? When I learned that you were one of the Dragon Clan, I began to doubt. And slowly my doubt turned to certainty. I'm sorry, Lady Elmelda. I'm sorry that, though it was never my intent, I ended up deceiving you. Oh, don't feel bad, Peleus. It's not really your fault. I'm sorry, but I'm not your son. But Peleus... But still, I was happy. It was fleeting, but... I knew the feeling of a mother's love. You have my thanks. I, uh huh. Man. That is a really sad story between those two. Oh, oh, uh, here we go, Fiona. As Lady of Murado, Fiona watched over her beloved people and protected them until autumn of her years. What a good unit. <laughs> what a good unit. I don't care what anybody says. After receiving his lack of royal bub, after revealing his lack of royal bub, Peleus gave up the throne but served at court, learning to speak easily to all. That's good. At least he had a higher position in life, and learned to stop messing up everything. I, I like the guy, but you gotta admit, almost everything he was involved with was a massive failure throughout the entire game. Mistress of the evil eye, the evil eye. <laughs> I didn't even use glare one time thinking about it. Returning to Hatari with recent events graven in her heart, Nyla hoped to migrate her people across the desert. Weird that even in the ending, it doesn't say anything about her and Raphael. I wonder if that was something that they decided after the fact. You know? Her and Raphael being married, I think. I mean, uh, the Black Wolf of the Sands, Velug. Strangely, Velug was still in wolf form on the day he went home. Asked why, he said only, it's more comfortable. God, I love this guy so much. <laughs> His title should just be Abs, though, honestly. Raphael, oh, shoot. Okay, Kanegas, talk to me. I'm kind of disappointed that not everybody has their little thing to say like they did in Path of Radiance, but I guess they're just going to... I guess they're just going to show the important characters, like the plot important people. Which I guess that's okay. That's fine. If a little bit uh, disappointing, like I say. In Path of Radiance, everybody, no matter how big or small a role they had in the plots, everybody, and I do mean everybody, had something to say. Even people you didn't control. Like, I remember Sigrun had stuff to say. And I think Zelgius did too. So I would have liked a little bit more, I guess. Like this is still really nice. This is still really nice. But coming off other games, it's it's jarring. It's jarring. But I guess that's basically the pattern between this game versus Path of Radiance, right? This one is straight to the point. Path of Radiance had no problem giving a little bit of fluff here and there, right? Ah, hi. Your work out there was superb. Not that I saw any of it. Hey, you quite aren't quite over the hill yet yourself. You know, I always wanted to go one-on-one -on -one with you just once. Oh, now that would be a fight. Ha! Huh. I would have expected you'd had your fill of fighting. I've had enough kill or be killed to last me a lifetime. But something simpler, some way of testing our respective strengths. You mean controlled matches with all the little rules they have. In a peaceful world, we need such things. Especially we Lagoos. Without a fight now and then, we go a bit strange in the head. That's the honest truth. I'd rather try to order a river to change course than stop a bunch of rampaging lagoons. No kidding, dude. We saw a lot of that throughout this game, especially in part three. Raphael. Raphael, the, what is that, earthbound chorister. Raphael performed a ceremony in Serenus Forest to wake his father, the king. Eventually, he returned to Hartari. Oh, so it does kind of imply that he went to go be with Nyla. But it doesn't ever directly say. That's so weird. The fearless Lion King. The fearless badass, more like. Wish I would've used that guy. He, he would've made the endgame so easy, I guarantee. Upon returning to Galia, King Kanegus lost no time in abdicating his throne. Countless songs still tell of his valor. Why? Why did he leave? He was such an awesome guy. I guess just to give it to Scream here. Lion King Shadow, Gifka. Since their youth, Gifka had ever been at Kanegus' side as his loyal shadow. He died proud of how he spent his life. The Fang of Galia, Scream here! Screamier as the new Lion King patrolled Galia's borders vigorously, and his large heart won the love of his people. Screamier was a guy that got a lot of development, I feel. I'm, I really do think that they handled his arc well. Going from this hot-headed guy who makes <laughs> very rash decisions, to say the least, 
to somebody who you could almost see as a competent ruler someday. And I, I really liked that. I really liked his whole story arc. Friend of nations, Renolf. Yeah, everybody loves Renolf, dude. Renolf was often run ragged by advising the new king. While he went through his duties, Renolf still indulged Screamir. God, <laughs> Renolf just got so screwed throughout the entire game. Had to fight Zelgius. Fought the Black Knight in the last game. <laughs> his conversation with Nyla is hilarious, too. And I only imagine, if only there were special boss conversations with Ashura. I can only imagine what Renolf would be. He's just like, are you serious? <laughs> are you serious? <laughs> Galeas Valkyrie, late. Lath later became a captain in Galia's home guard and pounded battle skills and fighting pride into young warriors. The kind-hearted warrior Mordecai. I love Mordecai. After returning to the forest, Mordecai avoided battle and lived all his days in peaceful harmony with the trees. That sounds about right. Mordecai loves nature. Finder of secrets. Liar. Worst unit. Liar. Lived free and wild in the forest. She often told her young comrades of the war and the heroes therein. God, she was just so not worth it. <laughs> she was so not worth it. Every other unit that I brought up at least brought something to the table, but not Liar. She was so bad. She is hands down the worst unit in this game. Except maybe Kaiza, I guess. Wait, sister. This is Sanaki, no doubt. You're my oldest sister, aren't you? What do you mean? It makes sense. All the pieces fit. The Galdra of Elise. The goddess Yune's voice. It's true. Inside the tower, I heard the voices of many hearts, and I knew... I am descended from Laban and Altina. Masaha, the former apostle, was my grandmother. And there it is. And there it is. I thought that's where they were going with this. I'm glad that she's not some thousand-year-old being. So Micaiah is the true apostle. Very, very interesting. But Sanaki is still... I don't feel like that really takes away from Sanaki or anything, though. She's definitely and decidedly the empress. But man. Man. How revealing, how revealing. Hmm. Yes, I thought so. In that case, my sister, please consider staying in Pegnan. With your power and charisma, you could do so much good here. No, I'm afraid I can't. Wh why not? Dayan is my home, and Dayan needs me to help it heal and rebuild, not Pegnan. But Pegnan... Pegnan has you, Empress. You will be a just ruler. Make your country proud to have you. Will I never see you again? Hardly. I think with what our countries need now is a sense of family and friendship. I ask that you sign a treaty of alliance with Dayan and announce that we are equals. I will, of course. Once things settle down in both our countries, that will be the first thing I do, sister. Thank you, Empress Sanaki. My dear little sister. Oh, that's nice. A little bit of a family reunion. The dutiful assistant, Kaiza. Kaiza remained a dutiful Galian warrior. He showed exemplary diligence, never neglecting to train, even in peacetime. Unfortunately for him, his grosser ass. The holy Empress Sanagi. I really liked Sanagi in this game, actually. I really did. She's a lot less bratty, honestly. I mean, she wasn't really bratty in the first game necessarily, but she, she, she was more douchey. She was definitely more Bagnon like Holy Empress Sanaki. Sanaki elected to guide her people in a world without the goddess. It made treaties uniting the continent. Sapphire of Begnyan, Sigrid. I, Sigrid was hardcore. That's all I have to say about that. She was super hardcore in this game. Apparently not nearly as much in the Japanese version, but here, oh my God. Anything standing against Sanagi, she's just like, DIE! TRAITOR! Oh, I totally missed her thing. Oh, uh, the Empire's Bright Blade, Tanith. Tanith was feared by her subordinates in the Holy Guard for her strictness and guarded Sanaki all her life. That's about right, the plucky freedom fighter, Tormod. As Bagnon's Lagu's advisor, Tormod labored to help former slaves out of poverty. He was busy, but very happy. We didn't really get these in Path of Radiance now that I'm thinking about it, did we? I know everybody said their piece at the end, but I... I did we? I, it's been so long, I honestly can't remember. But I, I always like these little scrolls at the end where they give closure for every character. I wonder, I wonder what kind of alternative endings we could have gotten, though. I can't help but wonder. Desert's Water, Morim. As Bagnon's first ever Lagoo's official, Morim assisted Tormod and supported his efforts in every arena. Liberation's Talon. Liberation's best stoner, Vika. Vika became a lia <coughs> liaison to former slaves, traveling between the cathedral and Lagoo's district, and was loved in both. And renowned for her epic dank. Collector of beauty, Oliver. <laughs> okay. Oliver followed his calling as a guardian of beauty by sponsoring many artists, especially those who depicted him. <laughs> okay. 
Lion-blooded Stefan. Okay, just come out and say it, why don't you? Stefan gathered like-minded individuals to form a tiny independent settlement, which later became a great country. The first Rastafarian nation in all of Tellius. Will you be headed back to Galia first? We'll stop by Galia, then wing straight on to Serenus. Serenus, why there? The Empress Sanaki has kept her promise. Serenus will be formally ceded back to us. She said we may return immediately. All three of us. <laughs> ah, well, uh, I see. That's good to hear, I guess. Sometimes birds change their feathers. The hawks, the herons, even the ravens. We're thinking of all settling down together. All this time, we've sorted ourselves by ways of thinking and seeing and living. If we can respect each other's opinions and we learn to compromise, we can learn to live together without strife. I don't think it'll be that easy, but it still ought to be simpler than getting Bjork and Lagoose to treat each other decently. Or killing a goddess, you know, either or. You set a good example, Raisin. All the major issues look like they'll be handled soon. The only thing we can't agree on is hunting and eating meat. The forest creatures are off limits. Needless displays of violence as well. You know we will not budge on that. Tell me, have you ever heard of a vegetarian hawk? Or a raptor that doesn't scream victoriously as the... Uh, <laughs> Or a raptor that doesn't scream victoriously at the skies after a kill. Meat, huh? That's a thorny problem. Honestly, if I couldn't eat meat, I'd just ask you to kill me. Honestly, <laughs> straight up. Tabarn was chosen as the first king of the unified bird clans. That seems good. So they all got together in the end. And reunited. That's pretty cool. That's pretty cool. The lord of the air, huh? Safe from the Blood Pack, this is Nesala's sky's shadow, of course. Safe from the Blood Pack, Nesala left his people and their nation. He became a diplomat. Finding atonement in work. So how much of his actions were the Blood Pack, though? I really sincerely doubt that anything to do with Path of Radiance was the Blood Pack, right? But I think betraying Dabarn was probably part of that dealing before he had sorted it all out with Sanaki. Which I think makes a lot more sense than him just betraying us again. Because in Path of Radiance, he already sort of... Well, hold on. Let's see races before that goes away. I'll, I'll get back to that. The White Prince Racing. Racing worked hard as a leader in the new Laguz Nation. His iron resolve under a pretty face was suited for politics. Hey, way to go, Racing. But yeah, I feel like Nesala only betrayed Tabarn in this game because of the pact. It doesn't make sense for him to go back on his word at the end of Path of Radiance, where he was pretty clearly... Are regretful for his actions. I mean, he's, he went so far as to go and rescue Leanne during, what was that, chapter 28? The one with Azuka. <laughs> he rescued Leanne from Azuka. Speaking of Leanne, but it just wouldn't make sense if he went back on that and betrayed Raisin again, especially if you got the conversation uh, between Raisin and Nesala on that one map, where he all but said, okay, fine, I'm not going to fight you guys anymore, you know? The mesmerizing Chanteur, Leanne. Leanne and her father made the forest echo with songs to stir pride in all those toiling to build the new kingdom. I really regret the fact that she speaks English in this game <laughs> because that ruined the running joke of her being a terrible person. The wise old crow, Neolucci. Despite his age, Neolucci worked hard to restore the name of the Raven Clan. Every year, he set out a new age record. <laughs> Oldest man ever. Will he ever die? <laughs> man of many mysteries, Volk. I want to know what the hell his deal is. I want to know what he's trying to do. Why does he need so much money? I guess we'll never know. After finishing his contract, Volk went back to the shadows he knew so well. He was a man of mystery to the end, going on to take down several incarnations of a new weapon called Metal Gear. The young dragon prince, Kurthnaga. Kurthnaga spent his days arbitrating conflicts between nations, guarding the peace for so many, guarding the peace that so many had died for. I think Kurth would do all right. I think he would do all right as a new leader. I just. He's obviously a lot less experienced than Degizia, but I feel like after really learning what the deal with his father was, it probably really strengthened his resolve a little bit. So I feel like the world's in good hands with him. Ina returned home and gave birth to her lost fiancé's child. Goldor rejoiced at the first dragon birth in centuries. Ina was pregnant? <laughs> Wait, do they say that? I'm so confused. That's neat. That's awesome. The Eternal Wanderer, Nasir. Nasir served the new Dragon King by observing other nations in his travels and often doted on his great-grandchild. So basically the same thing he did in Path of Radiance. Super Spy, Nasir. 
Of course a Lindsay would have something to say. Uh, well, your majesty, shall we be off? Yes, let us to Crimea, to our homeland. Oh, that's it? <laughs> I was expecting a little more, I won't lie. Gareth was named Chamberlain to the king's new nephew and taught him with both strictness and love. Who are you, Gareth? I'm positive that that was the guy from Path of Radiance, though. I'll have to look this up after the fact, but I I'm pretty sure it was. The devoted and awesome Queen Alincia. Alincia governed Crimea with resolve and a deep love for her people. Her reign was remembered as a golden age. Ah, uh, running, running, running. Or should I say Bertram? All Crimea rejoiced at Redding's return. He chose to forego the limelight, helping the queen to keep the peace. The protector of the realm, Joffrey. I'll bet anything that Joffrey and Alincia have a special ending, right? I'll bet they do. Did the special endings change the dialogue that we're getting in between these uh, character cards? I can almost see them having a pretty big effect on that, right? In fact, speaking of paired endings, if I would have unpaired Soth and Micaiah, would he just have pissed off? <laughs> Would he have just disappeared after the end of the game? I wonder. Lucia, the tireless advisor. Where the queen went, Lucia followed. Their love was fabled to be stronger than even the most blood sisters. Than even most blood sisters. Well, what's going on there, Lucia? Hmm, interesting, interesting. Could we have a Heather situation? Crimea's best person ever, Bastion. Bastion's unparalleled di diplomatic skills ensured that many treaties were signed, spreading peace across Tellius. Way to go, dude. He probably has an ending with Lucia, I imagine. The veteran knight Kieran. Kieran served the royal family with nearly phonetical verb. His voice could be heard from anywhere <laughs> in the castle. I'll bet. That's right. Kieran, captain of the fifth platoon, or whatever he said. The petulant Pegasus Knight, Marcia. You are so, so disappointing. So it is not in the same sense that Astrid was disappointing because Marcia is still pretty good. She's just not Path of Radiance, and that makes me sad. She should have just started the game with max stats, honestly. I feel like that would have been a more accurate depiction of her true capabilities. Marcia showed her dedication as one of the royal knights, ever vigilant as she patrolled Crimea's skies. The Prince of Layabouts, yeah, that's about right, Makalov. Makalov remained as a royal knight because the Empire was too strict. Miraculously, he was never fired. Hot damn. How? <laughs> How? How can that be? I guess maybe there never was a knight as fine as Sir Makalov after all. The unassuming knight Astrid. As a royal knight renowned throughout the land, Astrid's beauty and prowess were known to allies and enemies alike. Uh, we're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves there, don't you think, game? Uh, I wouldn't say she's nev necessarily the most competent unit, but she does okay. She's hella strong, if nothing else. The relentless halberdier Nephany. I wish I would've used Nephany, actually. I think that would have been interesting. Nephany lived with her family in Melior. Time and time again, she raised her lance in defense of the realm. The World Juggernaut. Now that's a title right there. Returning to his family in Oma, Brom farmed for the rest of his peaceful life. He never lifted a weapon again. The Wayfaring Country Girl, Meg. Now you just know that Meg and Zihark had a special ending. You just know they did. Meg had an ordinary marriage in her village and had an, had an ordinary family. Her house was always full of laughter. I like that she's just, like, a normal person, you know? <laughs> Everybody else is really special in some kind of way or has this mysterious past or background. But Brahma and his family are just people, and I always thought that was kind of neat. The alluring rogue, Heather. Heather returned home to care for her mother, swearing off her roguish ways. Yet somehow she always had money. Hmm. <laughs> now, as much as I liked Heather, terrible unit. Absolutely terrible unit. The lucky wayfarer, Donvin. The war over Donved hung up his lance and became a traveling performer. His act could make anyone laugh. Ah, of course, first class sage, Khalil. Khalil returned to running the store with her beloved Largo and daughter Amy. Her bright smile cheer many hearts. Thank you, game. Axe mom, Titania, okay. God, Titania was so good. I can't believe that she's so badass in two separate games. That just blows me away. That blows my mind, absolutely. I have a lot of thoughts about this one, honestly. I really do. I, I'm just so enthralled in these character endings. Never seen them before. Never seen them before. I'm imagining that it'll take us back to the title screen or give us an end card or something and that I can really get into all that. But we can't miss Titania. Titania remains second in command of the mercenaries. Once a year, she... Oh, well, there goes that. The Deadly Adept Shinnok. 
Shinon is still an asshole. I don't care what anybody says. He could be the best unit in the game, and he very well me he very well may be one of the best units in the game. This guy is a douche. Lays the day away in his old haunts. An expert at all he puts his hand to, he chooses to something, something, something shit. Well, the perpetual guardian, Godfrey. Definitely one of the best armor knights, for sure. I didn't feel it was painful to use him. Really. Almost kinda wished I would've used him more. Fate led him to find many women but never true love. Poor guy. The Agile Horseman Oscar, definitely better in Path of Radiance. Oscar returned to the Royal Knight at Queen Alencia's request, but still took mercenary work on the side. The Mighty Soldier, Boyd. Boyd trained day in and day out. Haha, <laughs> day in. So as to not lose a spot to some stupid rookie. He never did, either. Ah, uh, these are nice. These are really nice. The Faithful Student, Rolf. Rolf remained with the mercenaries. He was always in demand as a tutor of unrivaled marksmanship. I feel like Rolf had actual potential in this game. <laughs> He's not nearly in half as bad of a spot as he was in the last one. There's that. I gotta give him that. The kid does his best. And he had a hard... Yeah, his, his life sucks. <laughs> Honestly. His life sucked. All of the three brothers had a really, really bad deal. So I can really sympathize with them and their characters. Honestly. The Gentle Saint Reese. Reese, op Reese served as a healer and opened a small chapel in a corner of their old keep. He taught school there. What a good guy. The aspiring lady of blades, Mia. Mia set off in search of new opponents. She traveled the whole continent, but sometimes rested at Grail's retreat. You know, <laughs> Mia was clearly better than Lucia. I just think that Lucia had a lot more character. Honestly, she just made a bigger impression on me. That's that's really my only reasoning. <laughs> Healing breeze, missed. The silent what now? Here we go. This has got to be the big reveal right here, and I am so sure Soren is her kid. If you just look at him, just look at it. Soren really looks a lot like Kurth in general, which just it solidifies it in my mind. It's got to be. <laughs> Let, let's stop stalling. Let's find out. You are Ike of the Grail Mercenaries, and you're the Dowager... The Dowager? I've never seen that word. Queen of Day Inn. I heard some of what you've gone through. I'm glad that you're safe. Ah, indeed. In light of that, can I do anything for you? I think not. I think I have seen enough. As you wish. Well then, Lady Almelda. Prince Gurdnaga, take care of yourselves. Yes, and you as well. I know we shall meet again. Are you satisfied, my sister? You wish so strongly to meet with General Ike. I only did so because Peleus said... He said that it would be wise if I were to meet with him. Did he say why? That child, he said. It was the last gift he could give me. He wouldn't say anything more. A gift? By meeting General Ike? What about that Bjork could possibly be? Wait, ah, uh, wait, wait, stop a moment. Sister? Yes, you needed something. Yeah, look at these three together. Look at them. I mean, the resemblance is strong. Am I right? <laughs> am I right or am I right? Especially Kurt Naga, they're basically the same. And even his hair color is kind of similar. You know, it's not quite the same, but you could, yeah, you could definitely see it. Oh, and the red eyes. Hey, why did I never notice that? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> whoa. Whoa, Sword has the exact same red eyes. That was like, duh, duh. That's such a giveaway. <laughs> Hello, where's my brain? You are. What is your name? Sorry. I, I see. That's a fine name. Thank you? <laughs> You're welcome. Is that all? Uh, yes, yes. Pardon me. Calling out to you like that. I was confused. Don't let it trouble you. If you'll excuse me. I don't believe it. That boy is the staff official for Grail Mercenaries. What made you call out to him like that? I... Sister. Because I have lost the power of my birthright, I thought... Maybe I wouldn't be able to. That I might not be able to recognize my own child. But when her own true son stands before her, no mother could fail to know. Oh, my son, you've lived and grown strong. You can't mean... Soren is your son? There it is! What a twist! What a twist! I never would have guessed that! The silent master of winds, Soren. When peace had settled on the land, Soren packed lightly and set off with the only person he had ever trusted. So Ike and Soren had an ending together, I take it. Wow. Soren had one of the best arcs, I swear to God. He really did. Right up there with Jill, honestly. Both of those two had really good arcs. Jill, not so much in this game, but 
from from Soren's perspective, you see him trans you see him transform from an unrelenting douche in the first game to douche light by the end of the first game to just kind of just to just kind of forward or blunt by this game. So he has a lot of character development. I feel Leron, he got his wings back. He got his wings back. How? <laughs> Welcome home. Could it be that you were here all this time? Alas, no, I'm sorry to say. But for several days, I've somehow felt as though you would soon return. Ashen Nero, oh my god. She looks way different. She's like a combination of Yune and Ashura. My god, Ashura looks so serious in hindsight. This is what she looked like at first. And I guess the split caused them to take literal manifestations of their personality, right? Because... Ashura was all serious business, right? No playing around. And her art very much reflected that. But then you saw Yune in the ending, and she's this childlike being. And <laughs> I like that. I really like this new character art. Wow. Well, I'm home. And I'm glad to see you again, Leron. And I'm glad to see you as well, Goddess Ashinera. How long has it been? A hundred years? Five hundred? About twelve hundred years. I see. For mortals, that is many, many lives. Yes, the peace we once had is on the verge of crumbling again. That is unfortunate. The miasma of war is beginning to shroud the world. However, I shall not again be frightened. As one born of the hopes of man, I shall protect this world. Yes. Laron, I've missed your songs. Would you sing for me now? I, I no longer. Well, then I will sing, and you may sing with me. Is that all right? Yes. Oh, that's nice. So did Laron, is he like redeemed? That's it. That's it. Wow. So here at the credits, I guess we can just start from the top. Long story short, I loved this game, dude. This was a good game. This was a really good game. I feel like this is a worthy sequel to Path of Radiance. A Fire Emblem game that I really... I hold it in high regard, but... For, for, for different reasons that I, that I enjoyed this game. I think Path of Radiance is good for different reasons. Path of Radiance was a game all about the story. 100% about the story. And I guess we can start there with Radiant Dawn. So I think that it almost makes sense to go part by part because of the way that the story is divided up. Obviously, part one is good. Part one is good. There's, I, I really don't see any two ways about that. I, I was really interested to see the Dawn Brigade, to learn about the conflict in Day In, and to see how it really, how things had changed for them since losing the war in Path of Radiance. That was a really interesting approach to take. And it led for some good moments, lots of drama. And despite the fact that it's on a smaller scale than what we left off with in Path of Radiance, I still think that that's a very good way to set the scene and introduce several key characters and villains. Uh, not necessarily... Not necessarily main villain. How, how should I put it? I feel like introducing Beg Nyan as a bunch of villains early on was a good idea. It really set the tone, set the stage for the future conflicts that we'd be seeing throughout the game. And I really don't have to, too much more to add to that. I, I felt like I had a lot of good moments in that part. The Black Knight making his return was amazing. Nyla being a general badass was awesome as well. Gerard made for a pretty good first villain himself. He was a douche, <laughs> don't get me wrong. Giant douche that Gerard. But he was almost lovable in a way because you hated him so much. You wanted to take that guy down, and I think that's good. Part 2. Again, really interesting. I feel like the writing was probably the strongest in these first two parts. Not to say that the rest of the game didn't have anything to offer, but I, I really just can't help but feel that the first two parts really blew me away in terms of like characterization and stuff like that. Uh, Alencia, I, I really liked seeing her progression from a weak uncapable ruler to somebody who's more than capable of holding her own I really the Crimean Rebellion as an idea was really interesting just to see that not everything is all sunshine and rainbows just because we took out Ashnard and reclaimed our land for ourselves that was a really interesting angle and then I, I just I really like the characterization of that part I, I don't know maybe I'm not describing it the best but it, it really, it left an impression on me. It left an impression on me. Again, lots of really tense, dramatic moments there. Not a whole lot to ask for, in my opinion. Part 3, 
a little bit weaker. I'm not going to lie. It was a little bit weaker. Not necessarily bad. Certainly not bad. And that was definitely... Part 3 was definitely not lacking in a lot of really great moments of its own. I think really the, the elephant in the room with that one is the blood pact, right? They just... I don't feel like they handled it as well as they could have. And it's really strange to me that... The workings of the Blood Pact are so different between the two versions. The North American Blood Pact is totally different than the Japanese Blood Pact. And sadly, I can't say that either of them really worked that that well on their own. I will say that I really liked some of the character interactions around the Blood Pact. Like Nesala, for example. His outsmarting of the whole ordeal was very interesting. And it actually strengthened his character. And I wish, I wish there would have been more moments like that where the characters themselves are directly interacting with the Blood Pact, besides just trying to destroy it or trying to break the curse, you know. Because Nesala, like I say, that makes him seem smarter. That seems cunning of him to outwit that magical curse in the way that he did. And not only that, not only does it add to the characterization of certain individuals, but it also helps define what the Blood Pact can and can't do. And I feel like if they would have included more moments like that, maybe it wouldn't be so unclear and that's really my big issue with it i think that as a plot device it could have worked you know it, it does a lot of good things for the story i genuinely believe that for example uh, we said nesala that that's one really big one it also i i think it honestly helps ashnard's case a little bit because it makes him seem like he's taking a more proactive approach to the thing it, it makes it seem like he's taking a more proactive approach to claiming the day in throne for his own because he went out of his way to enact this curse you see whereas originally it was just sort of implied that everybody got sick and died so by circumstance alone Ashnard happened to be the surviving member that took the throne and I, I don't think I don't think that really fits his character as well as this sort of vile underhanded scheme that this game set into motion you know but I feel as though more character moments would have strengthened it for example, they could have said, with Ashnard, they could have said uh, that maybe he got cursed himself when he enacted the Blood Pact. Now, this is just, you know, off the top of my head, more or less. But if they had said that, then you would have not only Ashnard seeming more crazy, right? Because he's going so far as to endanger his own life just for a chance at power. But you could have also used that to say, well, the Blood Pact is non-discriminate. It, it targets everybody in the affected area uniformly and I feel like if they would have added more character moments like that they could have clarified what the blood pact can and can't do without necessarily strictly spelling it out and I think that that would have really benefited that whole device now the, the things surrounding it though the the situation that came about because of the blood pact were really interesting who didn't lose their shit when you had to face down Ike in a battle you know that would have probably not happened without the blood pact I, I can't think of any good reason why we would really want to fight them. Uh, you know, Begnyan, as powerful as they may be, don't really have that kind of impact to force our hand like that. I would never fight Ike. I would never fight Ike. If I had a choice between fighting the entire Begnyan army or a 10-on-1 battle versus Ike, I'm fighting that entire Begnyan army. Mark my words. Mark my words. I really feel like in part three, we got a little bit more development from Micaiah, though, and I really appreciate that. Oh, wow, the credits are over already. <laughs> wow, that was a lot less time than I had anticipated. I guess I can go back to that. Well, are we going to, what are we going to, oh, no, there's another screen. So just hold that thought, hold that thought. Part three, I'll, I'll make a mental note. We're talking about part three. Uh, in the days long past, a young man strode the lands of Tellius. He was simple yet true, his deeds brave and noble. He reunited two races long at war and healed the heart of a goddess long gone mad. I love this artwork. I love this artwork. Is this going to be our little fin screen that we always get? If so, that's a good note to go out on. Ask any you meet, be the young or old, Bjork or Lagoos, of a hero named Ike and you'll receive a warm smile and a tale or two of faith, courage, and honesty. I love that artwork. So simple yet so effective. Finn. Wow. I, I can't believe we blew through this game so quickly. So quickly. But I think that's a really big testament to the other thing about the game that I enjoyed, which is obviously the gameplay. Uh, if they're not, not going to give me anything else, I'll, I'll keep talking about part three, though. I feel like 
Micaiah got some good development in part three since we see her go from this person who's barely willing to put up a fight against Gerard. Now, granted, she was always someone who wanted to get rid of him. They, she wanted to take Dayan back into the hands of his people. But we see her more or less spare Gerard when she could have ended the conflict right there. And then <laughs> come part three, she's willing to do anything to save Dayan, which is what led to her choosing to ignite the Apostles' army given the chance. And I thought that was that was a crazy moment for sure. But a, one that left a really strong impression on me, honestly. Now, speaking of Ike right here, he really didn't have too much to do with the plot until part four. But I think that's okay. He he had his game, right? This is not Ike's game. This is multiple people's games. And, and it's really hard to just pin down one main character, honestly, because of the the way they handled the acts where each act had to do with an entirely different group of people. Now, Act 1 was obviously Micaiah's thing, Act 2, Alencia's, but I would argue that Part 3 had more to do with the Lagoos than anything else. Uh, the Lagoos and Dan, I'll say. So it doesn't really bother me that while Ike, while Ike was very present in Part 3, this the story wasn't really his story. It was so much more to do with the Lagoos Alliance, and day in and their dealings with this blood pact. So just because he wasn't the center stage, he wasn't the focus of part three, that doesn't really bother me at all. Like I say, he already had his whole game worth of development. And the fact that he's more or less the same person at the end of Path of Radiance as he is through most of this game, I think that's okay. I think that's perfectly fine. I can't think of any reason why he would be changing. Can I, can I progress? Oh, I can. There we go. I will say, though, that I wish maybe Micaiah got a little bit more screen time during Part 3, and I guess here's our turn counts. I was kind of hoping that it would give me the uh, the MVP for each match. I guess I can go back and look at that. I do plan on going back and redoing the tower again, and unlike the other times that I've said I want to do a bonus thing, I, I swear to you this, I promise you, I will definitely do that. I will 100% do that. There's no doubt in my mind. I just want I kind of want to go back and do it again right now, in fact. Just so I can use all those powerful units that I didn't get a chance to, you know? And obviously part four, I feel like that was a strong conclusion. A lot of mysteries come together. I I'll say I'll say this. I think that the end game of part four was a lot stronger than the actual act itself. There were still some good things to be learned, especially in chapter four, chapter five, etc. Ch chapter four, was that the... I'm trying to think. The one with... The one with Izuka, I feel like there was some good stuff to be learned there. And there was some good characterization in that, in part four before the endgame too. I just feel like that was probably when the story was at its biggest standstill, right? I think that's pretty fair to say. Oh, let's see our unit records. Yeah, let's see our unit records real quick. Look at all these characters though. This game has to have, if not the biggest cast, then the second biggest cast. The only one that maybe stands out as having a bigger cast would be mystery of the emblem where there is just way too many characters and so many of them are forgettable <laughs> to be honest but i can i can remember most of the characters in this game for one reason or another some of them because they're awesome some of them not so much looking at you liar let's see we got boyd vika <laughs> vika man tormod's group got so screwed i wish they would have been around because i like each and every one of those characters I can't think of too many characters in this game, at least playable ones, that I don't like, honestly. Be it because they had good stuff to do in Path of Radiance, or because they were really awesome here. Like Scream here, for example. Awesome character here. Great development. Wish I would've used him. <laughs> Alinci, of course, really good. I just want to see who's going to take the top spots, to be perfectly honest. And I noticed that they don't show any losses. Wow, Liar had less wins than Lucia. How sad, how embarrassing. Lucia was around for like four maps. Come on, liar. Hey, Astrid did okay for herself, believe it or not. She tied Shinon. So there you go. Astrid and Shinon are basically the same. Marcia did not break the top five or top ten or whatever. And Fiona brings up the rear. Is it top five or is it top ten? It's top five. So Fiona came in number six. <laughs> Just process that real quick. Just process that real quick. There's Ike, number five. Number four, Titan. <laughs> hey, she fell from grace. She was number one previously. 148 battles, 82 wins. I assume Sally's is number of times deployed, so 12 times. 
Who's Edward? <laughs> Edward. Number three. That's my guy right there. I don't want to hear anybody say. Now the question is, is it going to be Jill or Har? It's Har. Jill takes it all. Jill takes it all. I told you she's the best. I can't believe Har had that many kills for as much as I didn't use him in the end game. Jesus Christ, Har. And there is Jill. The goddess herself. The unbeatable. I think she's my highest leveled unit too at level 17 in third tier. What a good unit. What a fantastic unit. Is that going to be it? Is there anything else? Clear data will be saved from here. Select this data and continue to begin a game using your clear radiant dawn. I, we don't need that, honestly. We don't need that. I'm not going to sit here and play the entire game again. That's it. That's everything there is to do with Radiant Dawn. Such a fantastic game. Such a fantastic game. Getting back to part four. I definitely think that the the actual endgame portion of it was much stronger than the chapters themselves previous to that point. However, I think that the endgame was very strong. Like uh, As a whole, I, I really enjoyed every single one of those final maps. As, from a gameplay standpoint and a storyline standpoint, we were always learning something. Even the first map in the tower was pretty interesting because we got to take out Lee Kane, finally finishing off this senatorial douchebags of Big Yan once and for all. Uh, yeah, just all, all of the endgame parts. There was always something going on there. From part one with Lee Kane, part two we finally wrapped up Ike's little storyline segment, taking out the Black Knight once and for all. Part three, Degencia. I Degencia is a character I've really grown to appreciate throughout this game, honestly. We just see it. He doesn't really change necessarily, but I think that that's such a strength for him in this case because while he doesn't change, the world around him changes. Our knowledge of his character changes. In the beginning of Path of Radiance, he's just kind of a stoic dick, <laughs> for lack of a better word. But by the end of this, we come to really know and understand why he does the things he does, why he operates the way he does. And I thought that he was handled very well. Very well. And I'm not entirely sure that uh, one single game would have done him justice. And I think that that's another really big strength of this game, is that it has the opportunity to build on the things of the previous game. And I think that that's a very important thing for a sequel to be able to do. You know, there's got to be some kind of escalation, especially when you end on a note the way that you did with Path of Radiance, where we, we essentially prevented the end of the world in that game by defeating Ashnard at the time that we did. And to see the fact that they managed to make an even more grand plot for this game, it really stands out to me. And I, I mean, it, it wasn't perfect. It wasn't perfect. We've already kind of covered the elephant in the room, right? The blood pack. But I think that besides that, there's really no major sticking points that I have with this. And, you know, it, it really, it, it was. It was grand. Especially once we got to part four of the endgame and learned all about Sephiron slash Leron. And, of course, taking on God herself for the final map. That's, that's just epic. <laughs> Honestly, that's just amazing. There's really not too much more to add about that. I, I I imagine that the plot has a lot to do with the divisiveness of the game because Path of Radiance is such a beloved entry in this series, but I really don't think that this game fails to hold up to that standard. I really don't. I don't, I don't see it, not personally. And, you know, that's one of those subjective things to each their own. I'm not going to knock you if you feel like they didn't necessarily do Path of Radiance justice, but I can't help but feel that they did for the most part. It is really weird how this game had much less emphasis on exposition and uh, just general detail, at least in terms of the script, but I feel like what was there worked. I didn't feel like I had questions about what was going on. I didn't really feel like I was in the dark when I wasn't intended to be, besides the blood pact, of course. That, that again, there's that should have been handled much better in my opinion. In the interest of not dissecting the story chapter to chapter, though, we can move on from that point. The gameplay, obviously, this is where I can't see any contention between the two titles. The gameplay in Path of Radiance is, quite frankly, worse than Radiant Dawn in every single way. That's not to say that Path of Radiance is a bad game by any means. I think that it's certainly fun. I <laughs> Keep in mind, the last time I played Path of Radiance was on Maniac Mode, so my opinions of that are a little bit slanted with that in mind. But... 
even so, the gameplay in Radiant Dawn is so much better. So much better. It's much more fast-paced. Now, you do have to keep in mind, <laughs> I hate having all these little caveats, man. But I did play this on a second playthrough, so I was able to turn animations off from the get-go. I will say that that should have been an option for people on their first playthrough, absolutely. Especially with some of the longer battles and more storyline-heavy battles in Part 3 in particular. But the actual strategic elements in this game were so much better. I, I felt like this game had a much better flow to it. And not only that, but it can actually kill you, unlike Path of Radiance. Path of Radiance is like... Again, I love that game, but it is brain-dead easy, especially in the American version. You don't really have to put too much thought into what you're doing. Everybody is good. Everybody is great, even. It's just a matter of how great are you, right? How fast can you kill the enemies while still being in no danger? And that was really the name of the game for Path of Radiance. But here you have to really think about your moves sometimes. Particularly the Dawn Brigade chapters. God, those were pretty brutal. Those were brutal. <laughs> and as quickly as I completed this game, this it killed me a good amount. It killed me a good amount. I don't know, somewhere in the ballpark, 30 to 40 resets maybe. Somewhere in that area. So th I think that there's a good challenge here. And if you're the kind of player who prefers the gameplay over anything else, this is definitely a far cry more preferable than Path of Radiance. I can say that much. And despite the fact that we shifted armies and perspective so often, I really feel like 90% of the units or so are perfectly usable. I didn't really run into any Wendy or Sophia situations, and I think that, that there's, something, there's something to be said for that. Now, on the lower end, you have people like Liar, and I supposedly Kai's is even worse. So <laughs> there's that. I, I can't imagine that. But even notorious characters like Fiona, uh, I, I really found her to be good. I, I really didn't see the problem in raising her, truth be told. I think that almost anybody could raise her. All I really would say she needed was maybe a couple levels of bonus experience to get her going. And obviously, if you were going to do that, make sure she gets strength on those levels. But other than that, I didn't really feel like I had to baby her at all. She would just clean up killing for Jill. And that was enough to make her good. And with a cast so large, I think that's impressive to me. Even latecomers, I was able to use Lucia just fine. She obviously isn't going to be as godly as a well-trained Edward or a well-trained Mia. But I think that that's perfectly fair. You know, why Why would you even... Like, think about it this way. Why should Lucia be better than Mia and Edward when she comes this late in the game? You know, it, it would almost be unfair in a way. It would be like saying... Well, you trained Edward? Too bad. Here's Lucia. She's just better. You know? And I, I think that that's... I, I think that there's something to be said for that kind of design philosophy where you have the option of going the long route, playing the long game, raising up a unit of your own, but if somebody should die along the way, or if you happen to not trade a unit, there are alternatives in place that can get you through the game, which... <laughs> I do need to say that the idea of using all of the Laguz Royals on the last map is a little bit ridiculous. I think they would have been better off limiting it to just one the way that they did in Path of Radiance. That probably would have been a, a bit more solid, I feel. Just because I can only imagine how much destruction you could wreak if you brought Kanegis, Gifka, Tabarn, Nesala, and Nyla all on the same squad. Like, what else do you need? Granted, they don't have 1-2 to two range, but so what, man? They're unkillable monsters. Each and every one. I love the art in this game. I love the art direction. I love the graphics as a whole. Now, again, <laughs> I'm playing it on an emulator, so I am able to upscale the graphics a little bit. But these are some beautiful sights. I, I loved every single animation, truth be told. Can't think of anything to complain about. It really feels like they took the criticisms of Path of Radiance to heart when they were constructing this game. Like, any complaints about the difficulty, they fixed up quite nicely, I feel. Although, the decision to not include enemy range features and weapon triangle on hard mode was a little bit bizarre. Don't really agree with those. But, in terms of making the gameplay better, they delivered. In terms of making the graphics more flashy and fluid, they most certainly delivered. And I can't think of any reason that you would disagree with that. Personally, I think that this is the best looking Fire Emblem game to date. And again, I'm playing this on an emulator so I can up, I can upscale the graphics and they make them all HD and pretty. If they were ever to re-release this game though, hands down, it has the best graphics in my opinion. No two ways about it. The musical score is all fantastic. It made a much stronger impression of me. Made a much stronger impression on me in this game than it did compared to Path of Radiance. Where there were some good tracks. 
There were definitely some good tracks in Path of Radiance, but there were many, many good tracks in this game. From the map themes to the characters having their own personal battle themes, to some of the supplementary themes, like the one with Peleus, when you're deciding whether or not to end his life. That one was that was masterful, honestly. The, the music fit the scene perfectly, and there is something to be said for that. There most definitely is. Honestly, I could sit here and talk for another half an hour about all the little things that I did and didn't like about this game. But on the whole, fantastic entry to the Fire Emblem series. The only thing that would prevent me from saying that you absolutely should be playing this game is that you need to play Path of Radiance first, I feel, in order to get the most out of this story. As a standalone title, it works, but as a sequel to Path of Radiance, it is so much better, and there's so much more that you can really enjoy about this game if you have played the prequel before. And I, I, I think that's fair. I think that's fair, but unlike Path of Radiance, I couldn't say that this is necessarily as good of an entry point. But with that, we are done with Fire Emblem Radiance Dawn. I'm going to do one more episode of this where I go through the tower, look up the growth rates, and I'm sure that's going to be a blast. Uh, do all that kind of fun stuff and do a little bit of extra. And just get all that little extra stuff out of the way. Seriously, you guys absolutely astounded me with all your love and support for this. All the li like, all the little comments you guys made, all the little story tidbits and interesting information about this game that maybe not everybody would know off the top of their head that made that so much more interesting for me so much more exciting and fun to play not only was it an experience seeing this story firsthand but just knowing that you guys would come through and just drop little knowledge like little tidbits of knowledge in the comment section that was such a cool thing to see and I feel like that made a better experience for not only myself but hopefully for other people watching this as well so that maybe even if they've experienced this game for themselves maybe you learn something new but with all that said that is going to do it for me. So, thank you for watching. I hope that you enjoyed this playthrough as much as I did. And I will catch you all next time. Until then, guys, have a good one. Peace.